Even the smoke did not blow alarm, you know? Because if the fire uh, people came and come to my house, that I would pay like 1,000 something. You know? But Holy Spirit said, I'm not going to spend this money, but I will hold this fire for you to see that the God is still alive. I was just like, I just went and out the, and out the, um, the gas. I, I, um, I took the pot outside the room. I said, Jesus, I thank you. It's a great testimony. Because, see, you know, everybody knows what is happening in Australia. I'm not the owner of the house. Insurance will pay, fine, but you have to pay to you. <laughs> Maybe my children will complete the payment, you know. I was just thanking God. I called my husband and said, Do you know what? This is a testimony for almost nine hours. Nine hours. Almost nine hours. Because normally the reports, you know, could have catch fire, you know, boss and everywhere. All my property. Oh my God. I just want you to just thank God. Thank Jesus for saving me. For saving my property and saving everything with me. And for making me not to cry. For not, in fact, oh my Jesus, I just want to thank you. Amen. Pull your hands together. <laughs> you are the next online for miracle. Amen. Are you ready? Please, I want us to come in front, please. Take the front seat. Would you move in front a bit? Yes, beautiful. I want us to sit in front. Praise the Lord. Are we safe for today? Amen. You know, prophecy has been coming. That mama came to release the double portion Elijah cloth on us. That this church has passed through River Judah, passed through Jericho, and has passed through Jordan. And now it's time to receive the double portion. And that's why she came to set the standard. And God is only saying a few will be focused. <laughs> a few will be focused. You are getting that. The woman that God has brought on our way. Is a woman only her testimony, her testimony will keep you alert and alive in serving God. Can we just stand up to give honor to whom honor is due as we welcome our mama, Reverend Doctor Esther Esosa at the point. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, oh God. Oh God. I know in my life. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, I will never come to that point. Of oh, had I known. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I will never come to the point of had I know. I will never regret. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I will never come to that point of had I know. Raya Kaboso Toyeha. Raya Kaboso Toyeha. The point of her I know, no, I will never fall to him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Time to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Father God, whoever is sitting on my glory, my financial glory, the glory of my children, the glory of my marriage, the glory not anything to it. Say today, I command you, fall down and be broken to pieces. In the name of Jesus, stand up and fall. And fall. Whoever, the force, you are in the air, you are on the land, you are in the sea. Wherever you are, you are sitting on the globe of this church. You are sitting on the globe of the members of this church. You are sitting on their finance. You are sitting on their health. You are sitting on their marriage. I am commanding you that you will fall and be broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By your heart as so for your heart. Be the gate as Zaya. What are he can do Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Say, Father, Father make, my life beautiful. make my life beautiful. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Make, my life make my life beautiful. Everybody pray for spiritual beauty. Say, Lord, make my life beautiful. Make my life beautiful, Lord. I am praying that you make this church beautiful. I am asking that faithful center, my God and my King, will become beautiful. Holy Ghost, Spirit of God, make this church beautiful. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I am the boss of the Lord. Whatever of God represented this church, I pray that you make this church beautiful. The members beautiful. The pastor beautiful. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I give you praise. I give you honor. Say, say Father God. Every point in my life. Where I am leaking away your blessing. Close it up. Close it up. My God and my kingdom, in this church, wherever there is a leakage, I must seal it by fire, seal it by fire, seal it by fire. Every spiritual leakage in marriage, in finance, in this church, upon the members, seal it by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Finally, tonight, say, Oh God, every spiritual rodent that is eating me up, that is eating my finance, eating my relationship, eating my influence, eating my divine favor, let them die. In the name of Jesus, say, You spiritual rodent. In the name of Jesus, I kill you by fire. Kill the spiritual rodent by fire. The rats, the cockroaches, the serpents, the scorpions, every spiritual rodent that is in this church that wants to eat up the member, that wants to take away the heart of the people from following God. You spiritual rodent, you marine rodent. You witchcraft rodent. Ah, you rodent, secular rodent. I kill you by fire. In the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. You said in your word that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Yes, Lord. And that you will that men. Lift up your holy hands and pray. And so tonight we have prayed. And so we say thank you. Because you said, Why we yet pray? You will answer. We are praying this night that our answers will not be relayed. We come against spiritual illegal checkpoints. We ask that no man, no woman shall stand against our prayers. Thank you for the word. You, Speak your word to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, can I hear a bigger amen? Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I want to say good evening to you, brothers and sisters. Uh, it is a great thing that Sammy said. I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so we are here again tonight to glorify him. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. And so I am going to quickly just finish without any reference to anything. There are many points where I stop on godly relationship. There are a few things that 
we, we will add to that list. I remember we start by saying that for godly relationship to work, you need to pray. For the person you are in relationship with, either a husband, a child, a member, a pastor, you will need to pray in relationship with that person. Like last night, I was praying for those I am in relationship with. And very early, the Lord was saying, call this person, call this person, call this person. I said, oh no, they are still sleeping. I let me not call them. But this evening, I called her. I said, look, I was praying for you last night. And the Lord said to tell you so, so, so thing. She said, ah, mom, this is what happened. Very serious matter. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Because once you start praying for one another, the Lord start revealing one another to you. And so, when you are in a relationship, if you pray, the Lord will start speaking to you concerning the person that you are in relationship with. Apart from that, you, your mind for that person will become better and sweeter because you are praying. That was where we stopped. What I just wanted to add is that when another thing about godly relationship is that it's a relationship of sacrifice. And that is John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting. There is no way you demonstrate your, your own love for anybody when you are not paying the price. What are the price you must pay in a relationship? No, but what price is given? There is no relationship, Sister Evelyn, where you are involved and you don't give. That is why how to know that somebody is converted is when the person gives to God. When you see a child of God that says, oh, I, I love God, I love God, I love God, go out, check the person's tithes, check the person's offering. If you check the vows that the person make, the secret vows, and then you come again, you check the time the person gives to God. Whether the person is even able to tithe the time of the week. How many hours in a week do you give to God? Then you look at how much the person reads the Bible, give time to read it. And then you look at how much time does this person spend in prayers. I have lived with brethren in the hostel, and some of them sing so well. They are good people. They say they love God. But when we return back, I look at them. They will go to their bed in the evening, and they will wake up and start reading their book. They don't give time to fellowship, to worship. And I begin to wonder, if you so love the Lord, you won't give time in worship. You won't give time in reading the word. You just wake up, you just carry your book, and you are gone because you are writing exams or so. And so love is giving. If you say you love your wife, oh, you will give. If you say you love your husband, you give to him. If you say you love somebody, you give to the person. And so one reason, one of the price that you pay for relationship is giving. You give. And so in a relationship where there is no giving, there will be no receiving. No giving, no what? Receiving. And so you give to receive. You give to God to receive. We have worshiping tonight. We lifted up our voice in worship and praise to him. We expect that he's going to inhabit our praise and form protection for us. And so God loves us and to demonstrate his love for us, he gave. He did not only give, he gave his best. He gave his best. He gave his best. You know, one of the things that lifted us up in our family was when one time Bishop Oyedipo came to our church and said, you know you love God. That time Papa was here and it was a convention. If you know you love God, stand up and wave your hands. Hey, 
all of us to the prayer And he said, fine. He is going to prove you now by the offering you are going to give. And me, I am used to giving five naira. There is no message a pastor will preach that will change my five naira to ten naira. <laughs> and so, I pick my five naira and I raise it. And he said, look, there is a woman here. You'll be asking God to bless you. And you want to show the love of God now. You are holding a miserable five naira. The five naira fell from my hand. <laughs> <laughs> the five naira fell from my hand. And, say, and you say you want to love, you love God. And you want to prove God. And you want God to bless you. Every day, you give miserable five naira. Oh, I said, so my five naira is miserable. I sat down. I checked my back. And I brought out, you know, 500 naira, which was the highest currency then. And I stood up. I didn't pick that five naira. I didn't pick it. I left it there. I said, five naira, you are miserable. You won't come back to my boss. You won't come back. If you are so miserable, you won't come back to my boss. My husband said, your five naira is... I said, that's not my own again. I have left. And so, I, that was almost all the money I had. And when I gave it, the following day, you know, the registrar of the University of Benin said they were looking for me. They were looking for me. I was also miserable because I was on sleeper and I came to work so miserable. And they said the registrar was looking for me. I said, what did I do? I didn't come late today. I am not a registry staff. Why? When I got there, he said, look, are you the Mrs. Sada boy? I said, yeah. He said, look, 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 look. Okay, and come and see me at closing time. Look, when I saw him at closing time, he posted me. He gave me. Immediately, I had an official. Immediately, I had three drivers. Immediately. So, I have been cheating myself. Truly speaking. My finances was no longer miserable. Oh, that marked the beginning. That marked the beginning. And I know. So when I got to church, I added 500 or 500. I still give him. I still give him. When Thanksgiving was coming, we buy a cow. We gave. We started giving. My, my husband, I said, let us go reckless. Because a relationship with God is sustained by giving. And so as we begin to give, God begins to give up. I want to tell you, there is no much prayer that changes finance. What changes finance is reckless giving. There is nothing that changes a relationship like giving. Because the person that gives you, you will not hate. And the person you are giving, you will not hate. And so when, they, when you discover that your marriage relationship is getting sore, try and give. Either you are giving time or you are giving gifts. Depending on the love language that your wife understands, there are four love languages. And so you look at that four love language, you know the one your wife wants. Like me, I told them that I want the four. I want a foundation, I want gift, I want service, I want what? Everything. Well, give them to me, give them to me, give them to me. <laughs> and so that's it. So you give. When you look at your husband, he's becoming something there. You look for something, you give. When you look at your son, your son is getting far. Your daughter is little, little bit. You give. And once you start giving, you start uh, giving not only cash, not only kind, you give words. You give prophetic words. You give prayers. And you spend quality time calling and putting that person before the Lord. You discover that godly relationship works. I had a pastor that a bishop keep castigating him. A bishop keeps saying that he doesn't wear, you know, this our traditional way, you know. Yes. 